Hey friends. Okay, so now we're going to tackle sinusoidal functions. Um, now, in 30-2, here's what you need to know with sinusoidal functions. A sinusoidal function, also known as a periodic function, uh, is one that repeats itself over a given cycle. Okay, so the diagram I've shown you here, um, you can see if you follow my mouse here, if I just started here, I'm going up and then all the way down and then back up. And right at this point, I repeat that cycle again. I go up, I go all the way down and I go up. Okay, so that's where the word sinusoidal or um, periodic comes from. They're cyclic, they just repeat over and over and over and over again. And it gives this wave-like pattern to them. The standard equation for a sine graph is y equals a sine of bx plus c plus d. And this is on your formula sheet. Now. You need to have a little bit of knowledge as to what the A, B, C, and D do. The median line, just let me put an ink uh, on here for a second. The median line would be this guy right here uh, in this example that I've given you. And it's the invisible horizontal line in the middle of the graph. Okay. It's also your D value. So if you see an equation where it says um, sine of x, plus four, for instance. That would mean that that invisible line is actually on four and then everything is going up and down based on that four, okay? Okay, the amplitude is um, also at your A value and it's the distance from the median to the max or to the min, okay? So if I drew that in here, that would look like this. This right here would be your amplitude, okay? The distance from the median up to the max or the distance from the median down to the min. And that's the same distance, um, just depending on whether you're going up or whether you're going down. Okay. Okay. The period of the graph is the horizontal distance from one start to the next. Now, one start to the next, it doesn't really matter where you start as long as you go to the same spot. So in the first example I showed you here, I started on a midline. And then I went up all the way down and then all the way back to that starting on the midline going up portion. Okay, so that horizontal distance that I cover is called the period. I could also find the period by going from max to max, okay, or from going from min to min. Okay, so that purple line that I just drawn in there, that would represent the horizontal distance of one period. A period is calculated as 2 pi over b. Um, and algebraically, that also means b equals 2 pi over your period, okay, just depending on which one you're solving for. And period equals 2 pi over b is on your formula sheet as well, so that is something you have access to. The c value sh tells you that the graph has shifted left or right. Now, depending on how um, keen your teacher was um, on showing you some of these things, they may have actually gotten you to try and put a number on c, uh, you don't have to in 30-1. All you have to do is say a shift has occurred. You don't even have to say whether it's to the left or to the right. You just have to say the fact that there's a C value there means I'm not starting right at that point anymore. We're shifting it all over here or we're shifting it all over here. Okay. So other than knowing whether this shift has occurred or not, you're not responsible to do anything else with the C parameter in 30-2. Okay. Your calculator does need to be in radian mode for the entire exam. Okay, you never have to be in degree mode for this exam. You should always be in radian mode. And like we discussed with polynomial graphs, you will be asked various application questions that you can use your graphing calculator for. Uh, to review sinusoidal regression, it's the same as polynomial regression. It, um, it's just that you choose uh, the sinusoidal one instead of the quadratic or the linear or whatever. But um, again, all of those steps are written on page 46 of book one for you. Okay. Okay, so which of the following sinusoidal equations has a period of 0 0.5 units? So again, on your formula sheet, you have access to the fact that your period is 2 pi over b. Knowing that your period is 2 pi over b also tells you that b is 2 pi over your period. Now, if I want a period of 0 0.5, I'm going to take 2 pi divide by these b values here and see which one is going to give me 0.5, okay? So I can go 2 pi divided by 6.28. If I do that, I get one. So that has a period of one unit, okay? Uh, 2 pi divided by 3.14, I'm gonna get two. 2 pi divided by 0 
um, I'm going to get around 12. And then 2 pi divided by 12.56, that's going to give me my 0.5. Okay, so my answer is D. D would give me a period of 0.5 units. Okay. All right, again, big long question, lots of words. Uh, we want to just shut down as soon as we see a question like this. Um, I am putting this purposely to have this conversation. This was a released item. These are the sorts of things you get on a diploma. Don't let it scare you. It's actually not a really, really hard question once you figure out what they're actually asking you to do. So let's read through it together. The estimated maximum ultraviolet or UV index Y1 for a northern Canadian location is this equation here. The estimated maximum UV index for southern Canadian location is this guy here. Okay. In both equations, X represents the day of the year. When the graphs of these functions are compared, the graph with the larger amplitude. Okay, well, amplitude is A. So who's got the larger A value? Well, I got 1.6 and I got 4. So Y2 has the larger um, A value. Okay, and Y2 is the southern. So I'm just going to put an S there for southern. Uh, then the graph with the higher midline, the graph with the higher midline, well, who's your midline? D is your midline. So I'm looking at four compared to 1.6. Well, that's the Southern again. The Southern has the higher midline. Okay. So it should be Southern, Southern, which means the answer is D. See, that really wasn't that bad a question. Once you got past the scariness of it being so many words. Okay. All right. A biologist collects, collects data on a population of rabbits as indicated to the right. The median or average number of rabbits observed. Well, the median is your midline. Your midline, your median, your average, they all point to right here. Okay, so it would be R. R would be the median population. Okay. All right. The water, this is another release item, the water wheel has a broken bucket as shown in the diagram below. The height of the broken bucket in meters above the surface of the water y after x seconds can be modeled by the function y equals 3.2 sine of 0.42 x minus 2.1 ah, plus 1.9. Um, I'm just gonna hide myself so you see the picture for a second, but you do have that in your book as well. I assume your book is open and you're following intently along. Okay, uh, so in each rotation, the length of time that the broken bucket is visible above the surface of the water. So if you're having a hard time with the visual of this, um, what you wanna do is just put it in your graphing calculator and get a picture of it, okay? When you do so, now this isn't gonna be the exact picture, but it'll just give you a rough idea. When you do so, you're gonna get something that looks like this, okay? So at this point here, this is where the bucket surfaces above the water. Okay, so this is the first time the bucket is visible. And then at this point here, that would be the last time the bucket is visible because at that point it's gonna go down below the water. So this distance from there to there is the, the time that you would see the bucket above the water. And so that would be the difference between the two smallest positive x-intercepts. So the answer there would be C, okay? Remember, you've got lots of time, so don't be afraid to graph and make sure you have the right visual in your head. Okay, next up. Uh, the height of the tide, this is another released item. The height of the tide, h in meters, at a particular harbor can be modeled by the sinusoidal function, um, that guy, where t is the number of hours after midnight on a particular day. To the nearest minute, the earliest time after midnight on that day that the height of the tide is at its minimum. Okay, so the tricky part of this question actually isn't finding the minimum. You know how to find a minimum, right? You're gonna graph it. Uh, if you're a TI, you're gonna go second trace minimum. You're gonna go left bound, right bound, and then enter through the guess. If you're a Casio, you're gonna go G solve minimum. You guys are gonna be comfortable getting the minimum point. The trick to this guy is converting that minimum to an actual timestamp, okay? 
Um, so first of all, let's figure out the minimum. Go ahead and graph it, and you should have that the minimum is 6.16154619, okay? Now, that does not mean 6.16 a.m., okay? It does mean 6, but the 0.16 you would have to now interpret. That 0.16 means 0.16 of an hour. So to convert that to minutes, you would have to times it by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So when I take point, that 0.16, that leftover piece of an hour, and I multiply it by 60 to convert it into minutes, I get 9.6 minutes. So it's 6 hours and 10 minutes after midnight or 610. Okay, so that's where the 10 is coming from. Uh, it's just a conversion of the 0.16 into minutes. Okay, the radius of a child's bicycle wheel is approximately 20 centimeters. The child has, a, has placed a noisemaker on the spoke of the wheel 12 centimeters from the outside edge. As the wheel rotates, the height of the noisemaker above the ground follows a sinusoidal pattern as shown below. If the, gra if the ground level, sorry, is the reference point, what is the amplitude and median of the sinusoidal function? Okay, so I'm just gonna hide myself for a second so that we can look at this drawing together. And really this drawing spells things out for you, okay? The noisemaker itself, um, it says that it's 12 centimeters from the outside edge. Well, 12 centimeters from the outside edge means it's going to have an eight centimeter radius here. Okay, because the full thing was 20 centimeters. The full radius of the tire was, I just want to make sure I'm clarifying that with you. The full radius of the tire was 20 centimeters. So if I'm 12 centimeters from the outside edge, um, the noisemaker itself has to be eight centimeters. Okay, so that's now going round and round and round like this. And what's happening is, it's going up eight and then down eight and then down eight and then up eight, okay? And so this guy here would be my median, okay? And the median would be uh, 20. And then my amplitude is the radius of the noisemaker. So the noisemaker, is eight radius. So I'm just gonna turn my ink off there and get my mouse going again there. So I have an amplitude of eight and a median of 20. Okay, <clears throat> good. The sunrise for a particular Alberta city can be modeled by the sinusoidal regression function S equals all of that, uh, where S is the sunrise time in hours after midnight, and D is the number of days since the beginning of the year. So January 1st is one, January 2nd is two, February 1st would be 32 because there's 31 days in January and blah, blah, blah. Okay, <clears throat> now, before that scares you, um, this was a released item, but they usually tell you what day you're looking for. They don't make you figure it out. So you don't have to sit there with a calendar to figure out what day August 18th is or August 15th, I guess, in this one, okay? According to the sinusoidal regression function, the sunrise time on August 15th, yay, they tell you it's days two to seven to the nearest hundredth of an hour is however many hours after midnight. So again, just like we did with polynomial applications, you're asking yourself, have I been given an X or have I been given a Y? <clears throat> so in this one, um, S is your Y and your D is your X value. So you actually have been given an X value, the day 227, okay? So you're just plugging 227 in for D. You need to make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. I know I said that, but I just want to clarify. I'll probably say it a couple times. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Um, you're gonna plug 227 in for D and just type all that in your calculator, okay? You should get 5.85 hours after midnight. 5.85. Okay, all right, given a sinusoidal equation in the form y equals a sine of bx plus c plus d, the maximum point. Okay, so here's what I want you to understand from a visual perspective. If I gave you a sinusoidal curve, 
okay? That maximum point right here, let me just switch colors now, you would have to take whatever the minimum value is and you'd have to add the amplitude, right? So, uh, sorry, I said the minimum value. I didn't mean that. I wrote it in the right spot, um, the median value. Okay, you would take the median value and you would add the amplitude. So if I take the median value, which is D, and I add the amplitude, that's gonna get me to my max. Okay, so it'll be D plus A. Coincidentally, D minus A would have gotten me to my minimum. Okay. Okay, good job, guys. All right. <clears throat> A chalk mark is drawn on the outside edge of a tire's car. When the car rolls forward at a constant speed, the height of the chalk, chalk mark above the pavement over time follows a sinusoidal pattern, as shown on the graph at the right. The graph can be represented by the function h equals 20s times 0.5t minus 3 plus 20, where h is the height of the chalk mark above the pavement in inches and t is the time in seconds. Now, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions with this scenario. First of all, the diameter of the tire. Well, what I'd want you to know right off the bat is your amplitude in these real life situations, your amplitude is always the radius of the tire. So if I know the radius of the tire is 20, the diameter of the tire has to be 40 because radius is half of your diameter, okay? So we got 40 there. Okay, the time to the nearest tenth of a second needed for the tire to complete one full revolution. Well, one full revolution is your period. So to get your period, it's two pi divided by your B value. Your B value here is 0.5. So you're gonna go two pi divided by 0.5 and that'll give you 12.6 seconds. Okay. Within the first 30 seconds, the chalk mark will hit the ground how many times? Okay, so that guy we do have to graph. Um, so you're gonna go into Y1, you're gonna type this into Y1. It says within the first 30 seconds, so that's an X value, you wanna set your X max to 30 and then just see how many times your graph hits the ground, okay? So when you do that, you should get a picture that looks something like this. And I can see that it'll hit the ground three times. Okay. The height of the chalk mark on the tire to the nearest 10th of an inch at 100 seconds. Okay, so now 100 is still an X value, but you can't go trace 100 right now because you only go up to 30. So you're gonna have to go into your window settings and you're gonna have to change your X max to be like 105. You just wanna make sure you just slightly overshoot 100. Then you can just go trace 100 and you'll get 22.5. Okay. The first time to the nearest tenth of a second, the chalk mark on the tire is 35 inches above the ground. Now, um, if you're a TI kid, you're gonna want, well, first of all, for all of you, you don't really need to be going to 100 anymore. Um, so what you could do is you could maybe bring your X max down to 15 or 20, okay? Um, then, what you wanna do for, if you're a Casio kid, you can go G solve X calc um, and TI kids, you can go Y2 is 35 and then solve the intersection point. Okay, and then you're looking for the X value of that answer um, and that should give you the 7.7 .7 seconds. Okay, 7.7 .7 seconds. All right, that is it for sinusoidal. Um, so, we will see each other again when we begin uh, exponents and logs, okay? Take care, guys.